Good evening, Can Hammer fans. After about an hour and a half of tantruming by my daughter, I can finally sit down and go through Index Imperium number one for you guys. So, as before, I'd like to thank Dylan at uh, Multizone in Gatineau for giving us the opportunity to review all these books so far ahead of time. And um, I'd like to remind everyone that although I may not be looking at every data sheet in detail, I will be pausing long enough for you to pause and screeny every single page if you would like. So this is the biggest index, covers uh, all the Space Marine chapters and uh, other Space Marine related things. So uh, we're going to dive right into it. Alright, so Space Marines, uh, faction-wise, they each have chapter keywords, uh, Ultramarines, Blood Ravens, whatever, and uh, the only thing that says here especially is that there are no Psychers in the Black Templars chapter. Sorry, guys. Um, and uh, the Blood Angels, Space Wolves, and Dark Angels still have their own special rules, along with Legion of the Damned and the Death Watch. All right, Reggie's here again to say hi. Okay, so special abilities. They should know no fear is now a reroll of morale tests. So that's pretty decent. Um, and uh, this is the new Space Marine. All the Space Marine psychic powers have been collapsed so far into these three powers from the Librarius Discipline. Now, the rumor is obviously that codexes will be coming out for everyone, and so I suspect there will be a large Space Marine codex of which there will be more powers to choose from. But for now, you have three powers. Veil of Time, which is no longer reroll saves. Veil of Time is now a Warp Tard 6, and Friendly Unit in 18 inches can reroll charge rolls and advance rolls and always fight first in the fight phase, even if they didn't charge. Um, number two is Might of Heroes, Warp Tard 6, and again, Friendly Units... Add one to their strength, toughness, and attacks, which is pretty good. And then Null Zone is a value of eight. Uh, any um, any me models within six inches of the Psyker cannot take invuln saves and have their psychic tests, which is pretty good. And that's it. That's the Librarius Conclave. Uh, Librarius Conclave. Librarius Discipline. So, um... I'm going to show you all the stuff now for generic vanilla Space Marines. So this is all the chapters other than Dark Angels, uh, Space Wolves, and Blood Angels. And uh, But you'll note that all these can be used with uh, those chapters if you need to, which is how I read it. So um, uh, here we go. So just a note here about bikes. So anytime you have a bike, it increases the toughness by one and the wounds by one. It also increases the move to about 14. It changes depending on the unit, but most uh, Space Marine type bikers will move 14 inches. It also gives you an automatic turbo boost, which is a s automatic six inches when you advance. So you don't have to roll. Uh, so all the bikers have that. The only bikers that are different from that, as far as I can tell, having read through four out of five books now, are Ravenwing, of course. They get Jink. Nobody else gets Jink. So bike no longer gives you a Jink save. Um, just looking at the Tech Marine particularly, um, the uh, Servo Arm is similar to the Thunder Hammer now, so times two strength. Uh, three damage, but you get minus one. So no longer is there unwieldy or initiative steps. If you have something like a thunder hammer or a power fist, you just get minus one to hit when you attack. But you can attack at whatever time you're supposed to attack. All right, let's spend a second to talk about the apothecary or how Space Marine apothecaries work now. 
So the Narthesium no longer replaces a weapon, it's just an ability. So uh, gone is the problem of does the Narthesium replace your shooting weapon or your close combat weapon, whatever. It doesn't replace anything, it's just an ability. And what this allows you to do is at the end of your movement phase, you can t attempt to heal or revive a single model. An infantry or biker unit within three inches of the apothecary, if there's something wounded, it regains D3 wounds. If there is nothing wounded but one or more of its models is dead, roll a d6 on a 4 plus that a single slain model is returned to the unit with one wound remaining. If the apothecary fails that roll, he can do nothing else for the rest of the turn. And um, a unit can only be the target of the Narthesium ability once each turn. So there is something different about Narthesium. I like it. Um, it could be powerful. I like that it's not just a 5-up feel no pain or ward save like a lot of other abilities because there could be too many of those in the game. I like this twist on Narthesium. I think it's pretty cool. So here's the lieutenant for the new Primaris Space Marines. People have already seen all these things. So Company Ancient, the Ancient is the banner barrier. So you see here they get a banner and the banners are all specific now in the data slate. So you don't get to choose banners anymore. Um, most of the banners do the same thing. So you add one to the leadership and you roll D6 every time a model is destroyed and before removing the wound on a four plus, they can attack one more time. So that's kind of what the Space Marine banners do. And so the ancients are the banner bearers. Okay, that confused me at first till I figured out that they were the banner guys. There is your vanilla tactical squad. So 3 plus 3 plus 4, 4, 1, 1, 7, 3 plus. We already know about this. Um, nothing much has changed in their weaponry uh, other than the use of pistols. And I bet they can just get all the usual substitute weapons in. Of course, now all your different members and different weapon types can shoot at different targets. So that's helpful. Makes the tactical squad a lot more versatile. Um, and it can still combat squad. So um, I think the tactical squad has gotten a little bit better because they can use pistols and the chainsaws are a little bit better now. Um, and, uh, oh, they don't have chainsaws, um, but they can shoot their weapons at different things. So it's not bad to put like a las cannon in a tactical squad anymore. Scouts, so scouts are basically the same as tactical squads like before, except they have four plus armor instead of three plus. Um, the shotguns are not bad if you're in half range, which is six inches. Um, and uh, they can take missile launchers, of course. Uh, so the missile launcher, the crack missile, the frag missile is okay. D6 at strength four, one. You might as well get bolters, though. The crack missile is not bad. So it's 48 inch range, eight strength, and minus two AP with D6 damage. So it's not too bad. So I think we might see some more missile launchers. And of course, sniper rifles, 36 inch range, one shot, strength four and one damage with no rend. However, it allows you to target characters. And if you roll six plus on the wound, it's a mortal wound. So that's one way of targeting sniping out characters is by using sniper rifles. Um, yeah. And uh, scouts can, inf what used to be infiltrated is now called concealed positions. So they can set up anywhere on the battlefield more than nine inches from the enemy deployment zone. And they have camo cloaks, which give you plus two to the saving throws when in cover instead of one. So that gives them a two plus in cover. And they don't have to buy the camo cloaks anymore. They automatically get them. Uh, well, it says, oh, no, no. I think we might have to pay for them still. Yeah, we'll see at the end. But yeah, sorry, that was my mistake. So these are the new Primaris tactical is the intercessors. There's the infamous Imperial Space Marine and this disintegration combi gun, <laughs> which is uh, strength five minus three AP D6 wounds.
on a guard. Chapter Banner Bear. So as we all know, this was leaked a long time ago. Dreadnoughts, I think, are making a comeback. They are moving six inches. They have toughness seven and eight wounds with a three plus save. And uh, the armaments have been improved. Um, and uh, you can't immobilize them anymore. So I think Dreadnoughts are going to be making a comeback in eighth edition. The difference, I think, between the Venerable is uh, that it has a, a, on a, a 6 plus feel no pain. There's the Contemptor, and the Contemptor is a monster, actually, with 10 wounds. So this actually, it goes down. Um, well, it's not a monster, it's a Dreadnought, but it has, it has the monster characteristics where it gets weaker as it takes damage. And there's the Ironclad. Terminators, lots have been talked about Terminators and how they might be coming back. Maybe, we'll see, two wounds um, and the invuln save and the deep striking mechanism might make them quite useful. Depends on their price, I guess. So Salt Marines, same as Tax, uh, except they have the Chainsword, which now gives you two attacks uh, in combat. And uh, Eviscerator is pretty good, like just like it used to be, except instead of Unwieldy, it's minus one to hit. And uh, Jump Packs allow you to Deep Strike very accurately. So I think Assault Squads will serve a purpose for sure, um, fighting other Chaff. Inceptors, the Primaris Assault Squads. So the other thing to note is that bikers don't have Relentless anymore. So um, if you have a heavy weapon um, or whatever, you do take the minus one to hit penalty. Land speeders are decent, 16 inch move, 3 plus 3 plus, toughness 5, 6 wounds, and 2 attacks, 3 plus save. Um, and they have, uh, they can move uh, six, 20 inches instead of 16 inches whilst the unit contains 3 models. So if you have 3 land speeders in a unit, uh, they can move 20 inches. So the humble rhino. So the humble rhino now is here. Uh, it is now a toughness seven tank with ten wounds. So that's already good. It can make three attacks until it's halfway dead, which is great, and has a three plus save and a ballistic skill of three plus down to five plus. Storm bolter, of course, is uh, rapid fire two, so it can make up to four shots. Strength four, no rend, and um, it can repair itself on a six. Um, in each at the start of your turn, so that's maybe makes that easier to remember than the current one, and it means you don't have to give up your shooting to try and repair. Uh, has smoke launchers and it still explodes on a six. So, this is what happens with vehicles now if it's reduced to zero wounds, you roll a d6, and if it's a six, then it explodes. And each unit within six inches suffers d3 mortal wounds, and they can carry 10 space marine infantry. Uh, models only. No jump backs, terminators, primaries, or centurion models. So there's the humble rhino. We'll see how many points it is in a minute. There's this new rhino primaris, which I think is called that only because it has different weapons. 
um, and a serval skull hub. It still can't transport Primaris uh, Marines, so it's a little bit of a, a bad name. It's not a transport for the Primaris Marines. It's just a special Rhino. And here's the Razorback. So the Razorback is pretty much the same as the Rhino, except of, for the weapons loadouts, and it can't repair, and it can only transport six people. And note, there's no more firing ports or anything on any of the vehicles. Nobody inside can shoot unless the vehicle is open topped, like the Land Speeder Storm. Here, so Land Speeder Storm, which we skipped past, open top. So um, embarked uh, models can shoot in the shooting phase. Okay, drop pod. So the drop pod is now a vehicle with that's a mobile, so zero inch movement, three plus plus six skill, toughness six, eight wounds, and no attack. So it still just sits there, but it has a storm bolter and a three plus save. Um, drop pod assault. It allows you to uh, uh, at the end uh, of your movement phase. So same as deep striking. Same as teleport homers, you just drop it in anywhere more than 9 inches away from the model. Unbark units have to get out immediately more than 9 inches away from the model. Um, and that's it, and it can transport 10 infantry only. So it's very similar to um, like rhinos. It's a little bit weaker, easier to kill, and has less mobility, obviously. Um, but it can enter when you need it as opposed to driving up the field. So you got to pick and choose what you want to do. I think the days of null deploying drop pods assault is probably gone, I guess, depending on the points. So we'll see how that goes. Try and get that uh, in there for you. This is 3D, 3 and 1. Uh, I'm not sure what a Hell Blaster is. Um, plasma Incinerator, Standard Supercharge. Yeah, I'm not sure what a Hell Blaster is. Anybody knows, let me know. There's your Thunderfire Cannon now. So Thunderfire Cannon is now 60 inches, heavy 4d3. Strength 5, 1 damage only, and can target models that it cannot see. Thunderfire Cannon can only fire its ranged weapon if a friendly chapter tech marine gun is within 3 inches. If at any time tech marine gunner is outside of 6 inches, it can, is shut down and is removed from play. At the end of your movement phase, the gunner can repair uh, a single... Uh, oh, this is tech, tech Marines can repair vehicles within one inches, uh, D3 wounds. Okay, so I guess the Thunderfire is pretty good depending on the points. Because, uh, you know, 60 inch range is, I think, is better than it used to be. And 43, so that's not too bad, like six or seven shots probably. Um, but not a lot of Ren, so mostly still infantry killing. So the Predator is pretty decent, I think. I think depending on the points, we're going to see Predators are going to make a comeback. They're uh, toughness 7 like a Rhino, but the 11 wounds. Um, and um, 3 plus ballistic skill, 3 plus save. And they do the explosion and smoke launches and all that. And then, of course, the weaponry. So uh, vehicles and monsters are going to be a thing in this game. And so LAS cannons are a thing. And so if you're rocking a quad LAS cannon predator, I think you're in good position to take down lots of heavy-duty things. Uh, here's the Whirlwind. So 72-inch, uh, 2D6, uh, strength 7, minus 1. Uh, not visible to the target. So this is pretty good. You park it behind a building and you just shoot anything you like. So whirlwind, decent. I think we're going to see all these tanks coming back. Uh, Vindicator, so the Demolisher Cannon is 24 inch range, heavy D3, strength 10, 
minus 3 d6. So that's basically d, that was the same as what d has turned into, strength 10, minus 3 or 4 AP, and d6 damage. And it does d6 if the uh, unit it's attacking has 5 or more models. That's pretty good. And the hunter. And the stalker. Somebody asked specifically for the storm raven, so here it is. So of note, storm raven can take 12 infantry one and one dreadnought. Jump back or terminators take two spaces and a centurion takes up three spaces and cannot transport primaris models <laughs> poor primaris models um so the storm raven is a flyer so flyers are basically just monsters um that fly so they have the ability to shoot if they retreat unlike monsters they have these stats and as you can see there's a minimum and a maximum move as discussed um and uh they all have this airborne thing so only if you're flying uh, it can only be charged by flying units and can only attack or be attacked in the fight phase by units that can fly. Um, it's supersonic, so you make a 90 degree pivot at the on the spot when you first start to move and then you move it straight forwards and you can't pivot again. And advances is 20 inches. And um, there's no more snap shooting to hit flyers, it's just minus one to hit. And then it can hover at the uh, in your movement phase uh, you say it will hover and it becomes just a 20 inch moving monster until the end of the phase and it loses airborne hard to hit and supersonic until the beginning of your next movement phase and then it can crash and burn on a six it crash and burn and does damage to people around it so those are kind of the generic flyer rules land raider so the real question is will we see land raiders back well i think it depends on their cost over and above something like a rhino. It has almost twice as many wounds and a two plus save and eight toughness, so it's a lot harder to kill. Um, and it can transport uh, jump pack and terminator models and centurions. So that might be a way of, of uh, helping your terminators move forward now. So perhaps land terminators in the land raider is a thing. We'll see. Okay, so that's the generic Marines. Um, that covers all these uh, factions that are coming up. What comes up in the book now is just specific chapters, heroes, and characters that you can then add this other stuff, generic stuff too. So first, of course, we'll talk about the Ultramarines. And when you talk about Ultramarines, the first person you're gonna talk about is Gulliman. So Gulliman is still a beast. He's a Lord of War, eight inch move, 2 plus 2 plus 6, 6 toughness, 9 wounds, 6 attacks, and 2 plus save. Um, his uh, hand of dominion shooting now is a rapid fire 3 with 24 inch range, so 6 shots at 12 inch range, strength 6, minus 1, and 2 damage. The emperor's sword in melee now is strength 8, minus 4 AP, and 3 straight up damage. And if you roll 6 on a wound, it inflicts D3 mortal wounds as well so up to six damage there um and then the hand of dominion in melee also has a profile it has strength times two so 12 strength minus three ap three damage so gulliman is still wrecking things in combat pretty hardcore uh, and hitting on two plus oh yeah it's pretty hardcore uh six attacks as well so his armor gives him a three plus invuln so two plus three plus um and when he dies on a 4+, plus, he gets up uh, with d6 wounds. Um, if your army's battleforged, you get 3 command points if he's your warlord. So that's a whole detachment's worth of command points if he's your warlord. Um, you add 1 to advance and charge rolls for Imperium within 12 inches, and can re-roll hit rolls of 1 and failed morale tests for these units. 
and you can reroll any failed hit and wound rolls for friendly ultramarines uh, within six of ultramarines. So if you're just slotting him into an Imperial army, he's one of few things that actually buffs Imperium as opposed to a specific sub-faction or chapter. He buffs the whole Imperium with reroll hit rolls of one and failed morale tests. So that's decent. So there is that um, detachment that lets you just take one single model, um, or there's one that lets you take one Lord of War with no command point penalty, but he gives you three extra anyway if he's your Warlord. So that uh, might be interesting just to slot Gulliman in. We'll see how many points he is at the end, but he's just wrecking things and very hard to kill. So Tigerius takes a nerf. There's only three powers anyway, so uh, he can cast two powers only. Okay, Imperial Fists. So you'll notice that these there's no chapter tactics. Uh, that probably is coming with the future Space Marine Codexes, but as of right now, there's no difference between playing all the different chapters except for color scheme, fluff, and the heroes. So, um, and to some extent, even that doesn't matter because they're all Adeptus Astartes and Imperium faction keywords anyway. So it really is no um, flavor to much of the sp vanilla Space Marines at this time uh, until their codex comes out, just to let you guys know. So that's it, Imperial Fist is just Lysander. Crimson Fist is just Pedro Cantor, I believe. Black Tempars. More guys. Raven Guard. Salamanders, White Scars, where'd my hit and run go? <laughs> no more hit and run guys. And Legion of the Damned. Here we go, Space Marine points. So just to note, Space Marine points wise, let's see. Um, the Rhino is now 70 points. The Razorback is cheaper, 65 points, which is interesting, but I guess you have to pay for weaponry. And then the Drop Pod is 103 points now. So you pay for the premium of getting where you need to go. Uh, let's see what else. Land speeders are 80 points. Um, a dreadnought is 70 points without weapons. Uh, yeah. There we go. Here's the flyers. So land raider is 239 points without weapons. Predator is 102, so the Predator is the same as a drop pot. And here are all your characters. Let's see, Tigerius is down to 130. Uh, Marnius Calgar is 250. Uh, Kasoro Khan is 130. Gulliman is 360 points, including all war gear. So 360 for Gulliman. Here's Space Marine war gear options. 
It's a lot of pages. So I'm just going to talk about Grav for a second. So here's what's happened to Grav Cannon with amps. So it's still a 24 inch range, but there's no salvo rule anymore, which is a stupid rule. It's heavy four, so minus one to hit if you move. Uh, and it's heavy four. Strength five, minus three rend, so decent with one damage only. But if the save characteristic is three plus or two plus, so three plus or better, this damage does uh, D3 instead. So it still hits people with good armor saves. Um, like Marines and stuff like that. Terminators still wrecked by this. There you go. And that's Grav. That's how Grav has changed. So if you don't know, Flamers are no longer templates. They're just D6s uh, and hit automatically. Same with all other template weapons. The templates are gone. And then Melta. So Melta is now strength 8 minus 4 with D6 damage across the board. That's what all the Meltas do. Melta guns, multi Meltas, everything like that. And half range, you roll 2 dice when inflicting damage and you toss away the lowest result. So that's how Melta works now. And Plasma is already said. Strength 7 minus 3, 1 damage. And you can supercharge but you die on a 1. Uh, what else do we want to know? I think that's probably good. More war gear. Okay, so that's vanilla Space Marines. Um, so, so far not that complete but playable, I guess. Next, we're going to Blood Angels. So Blood Angels abilities, they should know no fear, and they get Black Rage. Add one to attacks characteristics in the fight phase if it charged, and roll D6 each time that you lose a wound on a six is ignored. So they get six plus feel no pain, and uh, add one plus one attack on the charge. Um, and they have Jump Back Assault. So they have a new discipline called the Sanguinary Discipline. Here they are, I won't read them out, but you can read them. I was never a fan of the uh, vampiric thing. Never got into Blood Angels. I've thought about it m many times and just never got into that fluff, so. Okay, Flesh Terrors. Gabriel Seth. Okay, Blood Angels. Okay, now this is my area, Dark Angels. So the Dark Angels get additional no fear. They get the unforgiven rule, so automatically pass morale tests and reroll failed hit rolls in the fight phase if you're fighting the fallen, which you probably won't be ever. So um, just get to reroll uh, morale tests. And then here it is, Jink. 
So as far as I can tell, Dark Angels, or Ravenwing bikers specifically, are the only people in the game who get Jink. But Jink now is a 5 plus invuln save against shooting attacks until the start of your next movement phase if you advance. So it's good. It's not as good as a Jink save in terms of amount, so 4 plus or whatever, but you can't take it away with cover or anything. There are very few things that I've seen so far that remove your invulnerable save, so you always have a 5 plus, and it does not nerf your shooting. So there you go. So here's the new Enteromancy Discipline. So Mindworm is now a Warp Charge 6. Select an enemy unit within 12 inches. It suffers a mortal wound and only can attack last in the fight phase after everything else has been chosen. So that's pretty good. Aversion is a Warp Charge 6. Enemy unit within 24 inches. Must subtract 1 from all hit rolls. And Engulfing Fear is Warp Charge 6. Your opponent must roll 2 dice and discard the lowest result when taking morale tests. For any unit within six inches of the Psyker. Reggie, go away. Reggie likes Dark Angels too. Okay, so Azrael is now an HQ, not a Lord of War. He's a six inch mover, two plus, two plus, four, four, six wounds, five attacks, two plus save. Uh, he has the Lion's Wrath, the, so his special Mastercrafted Bolter, which is a rapid fire bolter with minus one AP and two damage. And he has the Plasma Gun, which is your standard seven minus three and one damage, but rapid fire. Um, so Plasma now no longer gets hot, but if now you can supercharge Plasma, and if you do so, it increases the strength and damage by one. However, if you roll a one, instead of taking a wound, you just die. All your wounds gone. You're just dead. So I don't think many people are going to be overcharging their plasmas unless they're just like tack marines. So characters with plasma stuff, not going to be doing that. The Sword of Secrets is plus 2 strength, so strength 6, minus 3 rend, d3 damage. And if you roll a 6, it suffers uh, a mortal wound as well. So he has the Unforgiven Rule. Uh, he's the Chapter Master, so reroll failed hit rolls for friendly Dark Angels units within 6. Um, he gives you an additional command point if he's your warlord and the lion's helm uh, generates a powerful force field uh, all friendly dark angels models within six inches have four plus in Vuln. Um yeah so that's pretty good except that it's friendly models not units so you gotta pack everybody in so there you go Azrael he's better than he was in some respects and not as good in other respects so, Master of the Deathwing, Belial. So, he's now moving 5 inches because he's a Terminator. 2 plus, 2 plus, 4, 4, 6 wounds, 4 attacks, 2 plus save. Uh, so, he can have Lightning Claws or his Sword of Silence or Thunder Hammers. So, same as before. Um, and, uh, yeah, basically, same thing. He buffs Deathwing. Reroll hits uh, for Dark Angels. He has a 3 plus invuln for Storm Shields. So Storm Shields are still 3 plus invulns. He has a parrying blade. If he's armed with the Sword of Silence, your opponent is minus 1 to hit. 4 plus invuln. So he has a Storm Shield. Oh, if he has a Storm Shield, 3 plus. Otherwise, he has an Iron Halo. And he can teleport in, like all Terminators, within 9 inches of any model anywhere on the field. Decent. Okay, let's talk about Samael. Here's Samael on Corvex. So, is he better? We'll see how many points he is, but right now he moves 14 inches like all other bikers. 2 plus, 2 plus, so that's already better. Uh, strength 4, toughness is 6, that's better. Wounds 6, 5 attacks, and 3 plus armor save. Um, so, has the bolt pistol, has the plasma cannon, which is a heavy D3 instead of the template. And uh, again, if you supercharge it, he could die. The Storm Bolter and the Raven Sword is plus one strength, so strength five, minus three AP, and two damage. That's decent. Um, but the strength is times two if Samuel charged in the charge phase. Oh, so if he charges, the strength is actually strength eight. Not too bad. So he has They Shall Know No Fear. And so here, faction keyword have Ravenwing, they get Jink. Uh, he makes uh, Dark Angels within 6 inches reroll hits. 
um, and Iron Halo, and he's the Grandmaster of Raven Wing. Raven Wing units within six can reroll failed hits. Um, and that's kind of that's like so redundant, right? Because oh, reroll failed failed hits versus reroll hits of one. Okay, so that's better. <laughs> and then Swift Judgment when it advances, add two d six to its move characteristic for that movement phase instead of rolling a single dice. So he can shoot forward two d six instead. There you go. So if you take him on Sable Claw, there he is. Um, he gets an extra wound and uh, two inches of extra movement, but that's about it. And then he gets access to a heavy bolter and assault cannon, but otherwise everything else is the same and he can explode. So depending on the points, I don't think it's really worth to take Sable Claw anymore. Not that I thought it was worth it before. So here's your interrogator chaplain. I'm going to skip this and go straight to the biker. Here's Terminator Armor Interrogator Chaplain for our Deathwing players. And here he is on bike. So he is Deathwing, so I won't... I don't know if I can include him then in a Ravenwing detachment. I think I probably can because they just have to share one keyword, so they would all share Dark Angels. Um, so, yeah. I think that's okay. I don't know. We'll see. So he moves 14 inches like any biker. 2 plus 3 plus 4. Uh, toughness 5. Wound 6. 3 attacks. 3 plus save. His Crozius. Crozius now is plus 1 strength. So strength 5. Minus 1. 2 damage. He can have a power fist of course. Which of course is minus 1 to hit. 2 times strength. So strength 8. Minus 3. D3. And he has a Rosarius. So 4 plus invone. And his... Uh, Chaplain buff now is a reroll failed hit rolls in the fight phase, not just the first round. So it rerolled all hit rolls, so that's pretty good. For Dark Angels, units within six inches. And he subtracts one leadership from enemies within six inches and um, can use his leadership. Dark Angels can use his leadership instead of their own, and his leadership is nine, so that's decent. So I think a chaplain is an auto include at the moment, from what I can see. Here's Asmodai, who of course is the chief chaplain. And he's two, a six inch move, two plus, three plus, four, four, five wounds, three plus save. Blades of Reason is user strength D6 attacks. Um, so he's the exemplar of hate. We roll failed hit rolls in the fight phase, just like the other chaplains, but also increase infantry and biker attacks by one. Pretty good. Too bad he's so slow. He's not on a bike. But if you're running him on foot, then that would be better than the chaplain. And Ezekiel, who is the chief librarian, um, his sword is plus one strength, so strength five minus three D3 damage, and it does an additional damage if it's a psyker. And uh, his book of salvation used to add an attack. So now it gives you an, uh, a chance to pile in and fight before you die, if you die in combat. 4 plus Invuln, and a Psychic Hood. Psychic Hood now gives you a plus 1 to deny the Witch. And he can manifest 2 powers. Um, and he knows all the Intermancy powers. Okay, so here's Deathwing Apothecary. Banner Bear. Champion. I'm not going to cover Deathwing because I don't have any Deathwing. So here's the Ravenwing Apothecary. So basically it's a biker with uh, three attacks and an Arthesium ability and of course does not uh, change his shooting, so he can use his Plasma Talon and all his other stuff. So the Plasma Talon now is an 18 inch, so same as before, Assault 2, a 7 minus 3, 1 damage, and of course you can supercharge it for extra strength and damage, but you will die. Um, and uh, so that's good, so no more gets hot, which is great, and uh, not affected by Jink. So Plasma Talons, I think, have gotten a lot better on Black Knights. The grenade launcher actually is okay because the crack shell is pretty good. Strength 6, minus 1, D3 damage. 
or the D6 strength 3. So still not the best though. Corvus hammers are now plus 1 strength, so strength 5, minus 1 rend, 1 damage, and instead of rending, 6 is now caused D3 damage instead of 1, so that's the new rend. And uh, all uh, bikes, as we said before, just get a flat 6 when a turbo boost, and he's got the Narthesium. There we go. Pretty good. So Raven Ancient is, of course, the banner barrier, and the new banner is the sacred standard, plus 1 attack for Ravenwing within 6 inches. So Black Knights then, we'll see, we'll have four, four attacks then with the banner. Here's the champion, which I never used to use. But I might now, I mean the Blade of Caliban now is plus three strength, so strength seven, minus three, rend, d3 damage. So that might make him worthwhile. And he rerolls fail hit rolls for this model in fight phase if it targets a character. Not a big deal because if you're running him next to a chaplain, you get to reroll hit rolls anyway. So, so here's Ravenwing Bikers. So, um, yeah, nothing special there except for combat squatting, and the combat squad can include an attack bike. Here's the attack bike. Pretty standard, guys. Okay, so land speeders are standard land speeders, uh, except they get jink. So that's the advantage of Ravenwing land speeders over standard land speeders. So the Dark Shroud. So the Dark Shroud is a 12 inch moving um, and a 3, 3, 4, 6 toughness, 9 wounds. So a little bit worse than a Rhino. 3 attacks and a 3 plus save. It can jink, and what the icon of Old Caliban does now is minus one to hit rolls they make for shooting attacks against Dark Angel's units within six inches of this model. Dark Angel's units. Okay, so it gives everybody a minus one to hit shroud now. Decent. Uh, let's see how many points it is, but that's still decent. And the jet fighter is still bad. I won't even go over it, but you can have a look. I guess it has its uses because you can put uh, Mega Bolter on there or Laz Cannon. So Mega Bolter is heavy 10, 6, minus 1, 1. And Laz Cannons, of course, are strength 9, minus 3, D6. So that might be the only reason to use the Jet Fighter. But look at the Dark Talon. So the Dark Talon is uh, now pretty good. 10 wounds, 3 plus save. Um, and it has all the usual flyer rules. And it has Jink because it's Ravenwing. And uh, it has the Rift Cannon. So the Rift Cannon is now 18 inches, heavy D3, strength 10, minus 3, 3 damage, which is pretty good. Um, if the unit suffers damage from this weapon, you roll the dice and consult the table. And if, so here's the table here, if you roll above 3 plus, 4 plus, or 5 plus, it now further D3 mortal wounds suffered from the Rift Cannon, so that's decent. And then the Stasis Bomb, once per game, you drop a bomb after you fly over somebody. Um, pick one enemy unit that it flew over, roll a D6 for each model in the unit, up to a maximum of 10 dice. On a 4+, plus, the target suffers a mortal wound. So decent, that bomb is pretty good. Because AOS, lots of things are throwing out mortal wounds, no big deal. But in 40k, there's no way of stopping mortal wounds. Um, so, it's important. Okay, so Dark Talon might see play in my army. So here's your generic Black Knight. And um, so one must consider now whether to replace the Corvus Hammer with the Power Weapons. Um, because, you know, the power weapons are decent. I mean, a power sword is now strength 4, but it's minus 3 rend. Um, so, you know, it's not too bad. But I think the Corvus Hammer still beats them out with plus 1 strength, minus 1 rend, and 1, but with the potential to do D3 damage. I think the Corvus Hammer still takes the cake. And, of course, Black Knights uh, have Plasma Talons, which are not affected by Jink anymore. And, um, yeah, so Black Knights... We'll see how many points they are, but uh, still good. And a Land Speed of Vengeance, which I will never use. So 
So of note, if you supercharge that plasma battery and you blow up, uh, the bearer suffers three mortal wounds, uh, and then the storm battery cannot be used for the rest of the battle, which makes this basically useless. <laughs> Still not good. Okay, and this is funny. So the Fortress of Redemption can be taken as a fortification for anybody because it's unaligned. But they put it here under uh, Dark Angels. Um, it's got 30 wounds. It's a building. And it has Icarus Last Cannon. So Skyfire Last Cannon is basically with 96 inch range. And then it has these missile silos basically. So anyway, have a read of that. Interesting. Okay, so that's it for Dark Angels. We'll go to the points. So here's the points for the Dark Angels. And the War Gear. All right, let's have a look at the points here. So the Interrogator Chaplain on the bike is now 117, so that's decent. Um, a Ravenwing Banner is 117. The Apothecary itself is 97, and a Black Knight is 50. Uh, that does not include War Gear. So if we look at War Gear, uh, Plasma Talons are 0 points. Okay, so everything's 0 points except for the Avenger, Mega Bolter, and the Watcher in the Dark. So everything is free. So what you see is what you get, basically, in terms of these points. So I wish they would just say it then. Anyway, so Black Knights are 50, 50 points, so they used to be 40, now they're 50. Uh, and the Apothecary is 97, so almost double. Uh, so it might not be worth it. We'll have to see how that rolling 4 plus chance to save somebody. Um, and then the Banner Bear is even more. It's more than double for an extra plus 1 attack. Uh, the Dark Shroud is 128, which is okay, and the Dark Talon is 180, so it's gone up a lot in price, but I think it's gotten a lot better. And uh, Land Speeders are Ravenwing Land Speeder. Uh, I don't know, it's not on here. Oh, Land Speeder, 85 points each. Okay, and here are your characters. So Azrael's 180. Samael is 183. So Samael is the most expensive character again. Um, I guess they really value Samael. Uh, he's better, but I don't know if he's the most expensive character. Um, but anyway, and Sable Claw is 216, which is crazy. So there you go. I think Tech Marines and Interrogated Chaplains are still your choice or librarians. I think that's it for Dark Angels. Yeah. Okay. We're going to Space Wolves now. So there's some parts of Space Wolves I want to look at. So basically they have their chapter keywords like everyone else. And uh, they don't have... Um, they don't have any other special abilities. So it's a little bit disappointing for them. Just reading this list of things that they can also take. These vehicles can also transport Wolfen, so land raiders, okay. Um, what they do have is that their dreadnoughts are special. They can take the Hellfrost cannons and the uh, axes and all that sort of stuff, so you can read there. And uh, Blizzard Shields. So here's the Tempestus Discipline. Pretty decent. Storm color, Warp Charge 6. Any Space Wolves units within 6 inches gain being in cover. Tempest Wrath is the Warp Charge 6. Enemy unit um, subtracts 1 from the hit rolls. And Jaws of the World Wolf, Warp Charge 7. If manifest, pick an enemy unit within 18 inches other than a vehicle. Roll 2d6 and subtract the move characteristic. And that suffers mortal wounds equal to the results. So that's pretty good because lots of things are moving 4 or 5 or 6. So that's pretty good. Okay, here we go. All right, here's the Wolf Lord on a Thunder Wolf. So the Thunder Wolf gives, um, let's see if we find him off a of Thunder Wolf. No. So we'll see what the Thunder Wolf actually gives him. Um, 
in terms of stat boosts, it probably increases his movement, his movement's 10 here. 3 plus save. So of note, the Thunderwolf can attack now. The Thunderwolf has um, 3 attacks at strength 5, minus 1 rend, 1 damage. So that's decent that the Thunderwolf gets to do something now. Just like in AOS, the mounts get to do something. And just the usual stuff. Alright, so the Rune Priest on bike gets the Toughness and Wound upgrade, it gets the uh, extra turbo boost, and uh, Rune Priests get Psychic Hoods, and they can manifest two powers, and they know one power from Tempestus, so that's your Rune Priest. Of course, I don't need four of them anymore that I bought for that special formation, which is a bit of a waste. Ulrich. So Ulrich is decent. He's got the Plasma Pistol, a Crozius, and he's got this Healing Bombs, which is basically like an Arthesium. He's got a 4 plus Invuln, and the Slayer's Oath. So he has to kill somebody, and then he adds plus 1 to Rune Rolls for everybody within 6 inches of him. So the Iron Priest on Thunderwolf is still a good choice. Thunderhammer, of course, is still very strong. He gets the Plasma, the Hellfrost. So how Hellfrost works now is that any unsaved wounds uh, suffered but not slain on a 6, the target suffers a mortal wound. So not likely to really cause much problems. Um, but uh, 6 wounds, uh, 5 toughness, of course, 2 plus save, has the Thunderwolf that can attack, and Battlesmith, so it can repair vehicles. Um like tech marines. Here's your cyber wolves. Cyber wolves are pretty decent actually. Reroll fill charge rolls. Okay, Wolfen. So Wolfen are still pretty good. Um, they move seven now, which is good. Um, they have three plus weapon skill, which is great. Um, they have strength five, still toughness four only, but there's no uh, doubling down on death, uh, no instant death anymore, so it's fine. It's not a problem that it, like it used to be. And uh, wound two wounds each as before, three attacks, four for the leader, and seven leadership, and four plus save. Uh, so here are the weapons. So frost claws are. Uh, uh, oh, those are just generic claws. So, Great Frost Axe is now plus 3 strength, so strength 7, minus 3, rend, d3 damage, and you make 1 extra attar attack. So that's good. So that would be 4 attacks. Thunder Hammers, of course, times 2 strength, minus 3, 3 damage, minus 1 to hit. And then the claws are strength 4, minus 1, and 1 damage. All right, they still have Bounding Lope, which means they can charge even if they advance and can reroll the charge. Death Frenzy again, um, if they get a 5 plus Funeral Pain, so they've rolled the Funeral Pain into Death Frenzy. And if it's slain, then you can attack again, like before. 3 plus Involum for Storm Shields. Curse of the Wolfen now, so for Hunt, it doesn't actually tell you the difference between Hunt and K. 
kill in this book. So I guess uh, it's the same as before. So if you're out of combat, infantry, bikers, and cavalry within six inches at the start of the charge phase can reroll failed charges. It's 12 inches for blood claws. And if you're in combat, then you make an additional attack if you're within six inches and 12 inches for blood claws. So, okay, they really dampen down the Curse of the Wolf and there's no more double move, but they can run and charge still. See how many points they are. Then Vision Wolves are decent, two attacks each. Reroll charge rolls, yeah, decent. Might still be a thing. Bark Star. Not in the traditional sense of star, but like a large amount of wolves to, to clog up the table, that still works. AOS still works when you have a lot of zombies and stuff. Alright, that's Space Wolves. Let's go to the points. Here we go. And I'll go to the War Gear. Okay, let's look at the points. So, Cyberwolves 15, Fenridden Wolves are only 9 points. Uh, Iron Priest on Thunderwolf is 80 points. Rune Priest on a bike is 109 points. Um, Thunderwolf Calf themselves are 45 points. Wolfguard Battle Leader on a Wolf is 97, so, less, so more than the Iron Priest, less than the Rune Priest. Uh, Wolfen are 37 points, but without war gear. So if you put Thunder, so Thunder Hammond, Storm Shield, Wolfen is... Uh, do, do, do. Let's see, can't find it. Okay, let's have a look back here. So they can be upgraded or Thunder Hammer and Storm Shield. So maybe let's look in the Space Marines. Is that what we're supposed to do? Space Marines War Gear. Okay, so Thunder Hammer on other models is 20 points and a Storm Shield. Other models is five, so 25 points for Thunder Hammer Storm Shield, so that makes them uh, 52 points, so they're two points more than they used to be for Wolfen. So that's not bad, not bad. Okay, so we're getting close to the end. It's, it's a long book, but we're getting there. So, Death Watch. So they get special issue ammunition. When they fire bolt pistol, bolt gun, twin bolt gun, stalker pattern, bolt gun, garden spear, you can choose for it to fire this special ammunition. And here's the ammunition. And uh, yeah, so then there's a whole bit here about uh, Death Watch war gear. I'll let you have a look at that. And here we go. That is a big page, sorry about that.
Here's Death Watch points. Death Watch War Gear. Okay, Grey Knights. So, yeah. So, Grey Knights uh, reroll felt wounds against demons. Um, they, the banishment is basically a weaker smite, so decreased range, 12 inch range, and they only suffer one mortal wound. Um, unless the target is a demon, in which case they suffer three mortal wounds instead of D3. So better against demons, worse against everybody else. And they can teleport in because they're mostly terminators. And uh, this sort of thing. Here's the Sanctic Discipline now. It's been reduced to three powers. Purge Soul, which is value five. Uh, you basically add your dice to your leadership value equal to or greater. Nothing happens. Otherwise, you suffer mortal wounds to the difference. Gate of Infinity now lets you pick up and move to within nine inches of a model. So that's great. And Hammerhand uh, is uh, add one to wound rolls that you make. Which is kind of like an increase in strength. Drago. Valdus So Drago's an HQ now, he's no longer a Lord of War Castle and Crow still sucks. Strength user, no rend, one damage. Like, it's literally going to do nothing. <laughs> Purifiers still don't get the ability to come in at deep striking. Yep, and Purifying Flame is uh, basically they use the Smite, but only has a 3-inch range, but inflicts D6 mortal wounds instead of D3. Yeah, but 3-inch range, seriously? Come on. I'm sorry, the Green Ash is even worse. Paladins, I guess it depends on points whether they're going to be good. They're 3 wounds now, 2 plus save, um, so they might actually be good. Um, and of course force weapons are pretty decent so f nemesis force weapons the only problem is it's strength user but they're minus three ap with d3 damage so the path carry for the paladins all right so the dread knight is decent as before, four attacks when at full strength, uh, 12 wounds, toughness six, two plus save. The silencer is decent now, it's 12 shots, strength four, D3. Um, and, but it's not uh, force anymore, so it's not gonna kill any, instant kill anybody, so it's not super good. The incinerator now is a heavy D6, 12 inch weapon, six minus one, two damage. Psy cannon is now heavy six, seven, string seven, minus one AP, two damage. And uh, he has two fists, and his great hammers are minus four with d6 damage times two strength, so 12 strength. Um, and guaranteed at least three damage, so d6 but guaranteed three. And then uh, great sword is the same, but uh, uh, only strength 10, only minus three rend, and d6 damage. Five plus invuln, and they get the uh, teleporter where they can basically move within nine inches and they're psychers and they know one power we'll see how many points they are so here's gray knight's points so let's see um still over costed let's see grandmaster interceptor dread knight's 130 points that's pretty cheap actually uh, but does not include war gear so you add in the uh demon hammer great hammer um 
Incinerator Silencer is thirty. Uh, Psy Cannon is thirty points. Incinerator is forty points. That's seventy points. And then the his uh, hammers. That's a pair of fists. Twenty five points. A demon hammer is thirteen. So you're adding like seventy, eighty, almost ninety points onto it. So it gets up there. Paladin squad is still fifty three per model without gear. Um, and all the gear you have to pay for in terms of shooting. Yeah. So. I don't think that uh, Grey Knights are a thing, unfortunately. Uh, Drago's 240 points. Valdis is 190. Yep, still overcosted, I'm afraid, for Grey Knights. Okay, and that is Index Imperium Book 1. That is the biggest book, and uh, that was a long video. But that was page by page through everything. I hope you got what you needed and you enjoyed that video. So join me for the last video, which is going to be Index Imperium 2, which is maybe about half the size. And um, yeah, I'm going to be doing this uh, tomorrow morning because it's way too late right now. So join me tomorrow.